Sony a7 IV versus ZV-E1, that is the million dollar question. They both cost around the same amount of money. I've used the a7 IV for over a year. I've used this bad boy, the ZV-E1, for about three months very extensively. And I've come to a decision. We'll get through everything, cut to the chase. But very quickly, I'm Andy, I'm a content creator. I shoot a lot of videos, take a lot of photos, and I really pride myself on getting some cinematic footage, although I'm more so a content creator. I've shot some professional things, but that's not what I enjoy. Anyway, let's dive into things. First, we're going to start with a hot take. The ASM4 is dead to me, I guess mostly. Recently, I've just been going straight to the ZV-E1, and that's mainly because I like shooting video a lot more. In 2023, video runs the world. You can't really get things going being a photographer or just being a photographer. Even the biggest photographers that I personally know, they need to produce video content, and the ZV-E1 is absolutely perfect for that. We all know it's the FX3 sensor, and it comes with a 12,800 dual native ISO, and that's helped me film so many different situations situations that are in pitch black darkness, extremely dark, but I never worry even for client work because I have that, I have the flexibility and it's so priceless. However, if I only owned the ASM4, I would be screwed in these scenarios where I have to film something a bit more of a dark environment. 4K60 uncropped is also super valuable on the ZV-E1. I shoot 99% of the time handheld and 4K60 gives you that extra real estate. If you want to slow things down, maybe your footage is a bit jerky. Slowing things down can make things look more steady. I know shooting 4K60 for stabilization is kind of frowned upon, but when you're shooting handheld, sometimes you just have to cop it, sometimes you just have to get the smooth shot instead of a huge earthquake and just slow it down. It looks cinematic anyway, but having that level of flexibility is super important. On the a7 form I'm shooting on right now, I'm always juggling between, oh, should I shoot 1080 60 frames or should I just go 4K 30? What if I shoot 4K 60, the crop is too tight. I don't want that. I'm always juggling things around and no one wants to shoot 1080p these days, especially in 2023. Another photo slash video reason why I really like the ZV-E1 is that it's more of a hybrid camera to me, which is crazy to say. If you shoot S-Log3, there is a gamma assist mode on the a 7 4 so that when you preview your video and you look on the screen, it doesn't look flat and you can actually tell your exposure. However, it's designed so strangely that when you turn it on for video, it looks great. But if you go to your menu and you look at photos you took, which obviously you don't want to take photos in S-Log3, they have this ridiculous saturated look because the gamma assist is displaying on normal photos, which makes it look ridiculous. So if you're truly being hybrid and you're switching between photos and videos, you have to continually switch off the gamma assist mode, which is so annoying. Why can't we just switch to photos and there's no gamma assist or anything? And then on videos, it automatically comes back on. However, that being said, the ZV-E1 actually does that. As you can see here, once I switch modes, the photos still look normal. My S-Log assist is still on and is overall convenient. Switching between the modes, it's completely separate and no worries. So clearly the ZV-E1 is the superior video monster and it does video so much better in my opinion. That being said, because of the high resolution 33 megapixel sensor on the a 7 IV, the videos are actually sharper and they do look better when you compare them and zoom in. Honestly, you'll only realize if you zoom in like maybe 300%, you can see a difference in sharpness, but it's subtle. You can kind of tell, but in the grand scheme of things, you can't. Quickly on the topic of stabilization, I do believe the IBIS acts basically the same. However, the active mode on this works a lot better and it can get some gimbal-esque shots compared to the active mode on the a 7 IV. And that's something that's priceless. I talked about that in my review before and that's another reason why this thing is so good. Now let's talk about photography, which is where the a 7 IV shines. Obviously, you get much high resolution photos. They look great. You have the mechanical shutter, so you have no worries at all. You have a viewfinder, which I've missed a viewfinder here and there, but I do think it is manageable without a viewfinder. On the topic of those 33 megapixel photos, they are huge. They do take up a lot of storage as well, literally like three times. This 12 megapixel sensor has about like 13 megabyte photos, which is a lot more efficient and manageable. And although photographers may cringe at the 12 megapixel photos on the ZV-E1, I've taken some absolute bangers. They're only going to Instagram. I know people may want to print prints, but again, 12 megapixels can do an A3 photo, which isn't even that bad. And realistically, you have to be a renowned photographer that spends 80% or more of their time taking photos to get those amazing prints worth printing anyway. So unless you have that drive in the video centric world in 2023, 35 megapixel photos are probably not so worth it in my opinion. But again, the a 7 4 does dominate this camera in photography. Now moving to form factor, I never personally realized how good it is to have a camera that's so small and easy to use and you can literally put this anywhere. I've got these big jacket pockets I just shoved in. I don't use a strap. This could literally fit in my hoodie pocket over here. So good. Let's address some quick concerns that people may have. One SD card slot versus two on the a 7 IV. Even on the a 7 IV, I only used one SD card slot anyway, which is probably my bad, but 
If you write to both SD cards at the same time, then the ASM4 may actually overheat, which is the only problem. My SD card has never corrupted in these beautiful Sony cameras, and maybe I'm waiting for the day that happens and then I'll never use a single SD card slot again, but up until now, it's been working great. I have no complaints at all. Overheating, that is also a very controversial topic. The ZVE1 has never overheated on me ever in all the use I've given it. I filmed YouTube videos with it, I've done a bunch of things. And at the end of the day, 30 minutes continuous 4K30 is a long time to record video. There's only a small amount of professions that need that type of video recording, interviews, maybe recording a speech at a wedding. And I would even go on a limb and say, if I had two ZVE1s, keep in mind, if you're shooting a wedding, you're probably going to have two cameras anyway. If I had two ZVE1s, I could produce an amazing wedding video. Despite this 30 minute overheating, I think it'd be perfectly fine. But all I'm trying to say is 30 minutes is a long time and nothing to be worried about. So at this point, I've gassed up the ZVE1 and it is the camera I use 98% of the time, except for a few times I take photos, which is basically the only positives I named. But the worst part about the ZVE1 is definitely, in my opinion, the lack of mode dials. On the ASM4, there's a little flippy thing. You can switch between different modes and frame rates, which is really useful. And you can kind of do that on the ZVE1, but you have to do that electronically. And because of this, there's probably at least five times where I wanted to film 4K60. However, because I forgot and switched it to a different mode, I was only filming something like 4K30. And because it only says at the top at the tiny part of the screen, I always forget and it's really hard to just remember where you're at. However, on the ASM4, because those dials are physical, you really know straight away when you're shooting on what frame rate, it's just linked in your head. Some other cons about the ZVE1 instead of the ASM4, the battery definitely runs a bit quicker than the ASM4. And because of this grate on top of the camera, the ZVE1 is not fully weather sealed. So when it's pouring, you need to do something about that, cover it up with some tape or something like that. That being said, also, if you're shooting ASM4 in torrential rain, I probably wouldn't want to shoot with it outside much anyway. I don't want to test my waterproofing on these expensive cameras. It's also important to mention this is weather resistant. It's just not weather sealed like the ASM4. So those are mainly all the physical features, some software additions that Sony have added because this is a newer camera, which are also very priceless is the AI autofocus. It honestly makes the focus next level, tracks things all around the corner and focus on wildlife really well. And overall, it just keeps you in focus in more situations. There's also different software features like the product showcase mode. If I had that on the ZVE1, one right now, I'd put the camera here, it would focus, and it actually did on the ASM4 somehow, but that is also very welcome. Also, because it has newer software, it has more easy to use functions on a Sony screen. For example, you can swipe these things away, make different adjustments straight away, you can get your white balance, which you can't really do off the front of the camera on the ASM4, and in general, it's just easier to use. Overall, I've listed a ton of reasons why I prefer the ZVE1, and the ASM4, unfortunately, is practically dead to me. Whenever I do want to take a great photo, I do use the ASM4, and the crop mode is also pretty handy if you want the extra reach. You can do clear image zoom on this camera, but that being said, the quality just degrades further, whereas the crop mode on this camera on the ASM4 gives you stunning 4K60, which is really crisp and sharp. I mainly only get this camera out for photography and I shoot so many videos, so that's why 98% of the time I use the ZVE1. And if you buy it in 2023, you will have absolutely no regrets. I'd recommend it over the ASM4, but if you're a diehard photographer, go for the ASM4. Regardless, I hope I've given you the information you need to make the next decision. And as long as you're shooting on a Sony camera with the beautiful E-mount, you'll be in good hands. Don't stress. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found this valuable and I'll catch you in the next one.